Eplowitz and Adrian Broadus. Now we welcome you back to Sports Talk. Here we go on a Monday afternoon, coming your way live, Border City L House, 1506 Lee Trevino, uh, corner of Lee Trevino and Vista del Sol. Come on down. We're going to be here throughout the first half of the football game tonight between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Atlanta Falcons. In fact, the Eagles uh, fan club will be here tonight. I am ready for them. We've got great prizes. Thanks to our friends at uh, All That Music and Video Collectors Marketplace out there at the Fountains of Farrah, just below the Best Buy parking lot. I was there earlier today. They're already getting set up for Halloween, which is hard to believe. That's, what, uh, six weeks away. they got the decor going. They've got uh, the, all the Pop Funkos, the used albums, the, uh, the vinyl, the wax, the CDs, the movies, the posters. You name it, they've got it. And also, if you want to see some of their higher-end collectibles, they're on eBay. In fact, if you go to All That Music, the number two, that's All That Music, the number two, you can see some of their eBay items. Some of them are auctions. And, again, sometimes you'll find things that uh, are, are pretty valuable stuff, the rare, hard-to-find stuff. And they've got their eBay channel there as well. They've given us the complete history of the Philadelphia Eagles on DVD. We've got an Eagles lanyard, an Eagles keychain. We've got a Falcons keychain, a deck of Falcons playing cards, and a Falcons lanyard all from all that music and video collectors marketplace we've got four packs of rhinos tickets the rhinos are in action this weekend to take on the texas brahmas and we've got them for you so if you want to come and enjoy the games either friday night and saturday night at seven o'clock or sunday at four thirty, we are your hookup and how about this we're also going to be giving away a pair of tickets to Disney on Ice. Magic in the Stars at the El Paso County Coliseum. The 7.30 show on Wednesday, October 2nd. We've got a pair of tickets for you as well. We've got a pair of Oscar Arietta sunglasses to give away. They're really cool orange sunglasses. We also have quite a few of the Win the West ID holders. So if you are looking for a great pouch to carry your insurance cards, we've got the Win the West. West Oscar Arietta insurance card holders for you absolutely free just for dropping by we've got a yingling flight t-shirt to give away we've got a basketball in the body o t-shirt to give away and we even have tonight Adrian a Chuck DeBroder t-shirt we're going to be giving away team wow. Chuck is what it says somebody's going to uh, win all these prizes uh, here today at the Yale House. Serious question. In your 29 years, how many times are we talking Chuck uh, DeBroder interviews on this show? Interviews? Yes, interviews. Maybe even segments. Let me think. But DeBroder, I would say maybe in 29 years, maybe three or four times. Man, this is a big, I'm jealous. This is a big deal. I'm jealous. This yeah, this a, is a big yeah. deal. I know. It doesn't happen very often. Not exactly. Sports Talk doesn't exactly take over the airwaves and give away a Chuck DeBroder t-shirt. It's a cool thing. So all that is going to be given away here. Now, uh, let's set the record straight. Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate your mentions on the air. I appreciate the card and the chocolate bundt cake from George are uh, in the office, um, who I've known all 29 years. But I do want to make this clear. I started on the queue in... June of 95. June of 95. However, I didn't get paid for the first few months, so I think this could be the anniversary of getting on the payroll because I know I started in the middle of June in 1995, right out of college, but I worked for free as an intern for that summer. In fact, the only reason I think they hired me and paid me was I got fired from my other job at Camelot Music at Sunland Park Mall because I was working there while I was at the queue. And I went to a wedding in Austin, and there was new management at Camelot. So I called in from Austin to get my hours for the following week, and they gave me the wrong hours. So I showed up when I was told to on the phone, and because the new management was trying to blow out the old staff, they used that as an excuse to fire me. Wow. Did they really? That's that's incredible, Steve. Oh, yeah. Did, you, the ever, best was, did you ever meet ahead. the new management? Oh, I knew the guy. Absolutely. He wanted me to sign the, uh, the, the papers for the um, exit interview, and I wouldn't give him the satisfaction. I said, nope, not going to happen. Just give me my last check, and I'm out. And once that happened, the late, great Magic Mike heard about that, 
and uh, said that we are going to uh, make you and pay you to now be a full-time or member. Um, I don't even think it was full-time. I think it was part-time to start. But they gave me my first job, which paid me peanuts, and we went from there. In fact, I think I was making either 12-5 or 14-4 was my first official job with the radio station in 1995. Wow. I love it. I think <laughs> – you know, uh, that's that's a great story in itself, Steve. The perks of the job, uh, the, uh, you know, big shout out to Mike for getting you the job and having an opportunity to work at the radio station when what? You were like 23, 22, something like I that? I was 22. I had just turned 22 in May. So I would just became, I was just 22 and I just graduated from UT. And that was the, uh, and at the time, I, I didn't think I had a chance to get into radio, which is what I really wanted because I did it in college. So I was getting ready to already plan a chance to go back to school to get my master's degree in uh, probably the fall of 95 when I got the phone call from the radio station that they wanted to bring me on board. Wow, it's the best plans that could have ever changed right there, right? You're not kidding. Never looked back, and the rest uh, it has been history. So, Thank you. It's good to know that uh, on Mexican Independence Day, uh, that is the official uh, mark of my anniversary at the radio station, which means next September 16th will be uh, 30 years, 30 full years, even though to me, I always look at June as my as when I really started in El Paso because that's when I made my on-air debut. I just worked for nothing for the whole summer was basically how it was. You know, I remember 25 years, Steve. Uh, I've been on the show for seven years, so this is it's cool to Amazing. to be alongside and just to you know witness these milestones. But when you're pushing three decades, I mean that that's some good stuff right there. It's not just here on 600 ESPN El Paso. People know you for what you do on KLAQ as well. So uh, yeah, thank you for all you do here on this station, man. Uh, thanks for recognizing it. There's a few of us at the radio station that are in this territory. Glenn Garza, my colleague on the queue, is one. Buzz Adams uh, is the other. And uh, really, I think between the three of us, we have the uh, the longest on-air tenure at the radio station. Um, but uh, Ray uh, Ariola has been doing it forever, too. He just uh, he wears a lot of hats like we all do. So, uh, yep, seven years for you is amazing. I can't believe that you're almost coming up on your tenure. That's that's what blows me away more than anything else. Okay, so everybody back here, it's me, Alberto, and Sebastian. No one was alive when you started uh, in radio. So there you go. Just another one to throw your way. Wait a minute. Of the three of you, I knew Sebastian because uh, he just started college. But you're telling me that you and Alberto were both not even born in the summer of 95? <laughs> no, I was uh, October of 98, or 6, I should say. And then Alberto is uh, 97. So there you go. All right. Well, listen, uh, when in 97? What month? November, right, Alberto? Yeah. Oh, November. my God. I had already started sports talk before Alberto was born. Because I, I started sports talk in July of 97. No, so. no, don't worry. I'm uh, I'm November of '98, so. Oh, even worse. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right, that's uh, yes. So, Adrian has about uh, two years on you, huh? He was October of '96. That's right. All right, so you're turning 28 in about a month. That's correct. That's right. Good for you. Good for you. Well, first off, welcome everybody. Welcome Alberto. Welcome Sebastian. SPN. And uh, thank you, Adrian, for all of that. I know Orly's on the line. I want to get to Orly to start off the show. But you mentioned it during Sports Talk and Sports Center to begin things. Still, hard to believe the story of Emmanuel Lopez, who we lost Saturday in that awful semi truck uh, collision with the vehicle he was driving on I 10 uh, near that New Mexico state line in Arizona. Um, I've, I've made that drive a, a, you know, a, a ton. In fact, done it a couple of times already this year. So it's scary just thinking about that, but uh, awful. We lost, um, you know, three people in that uh, horrific accident, although we only know about uh, Emmanuel so far, and it's just terrible. And then hearing the story that he was making the drive up on Saturday so we can go watch the Rams-Cardinals game, ah, uh, just it's just it, 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 it's awful. No other way to put it. And he was a, it was a good football player. He was a four-year starter and somebody who – you know, was uh, was was part of the program since he first got there. So really, really tough news to hear, and uh, just uh, just feel terrible. 
Yeah, it really hurt for the uh, Franklin community, the West Side community. Uh, my wife teaches there, so we were hearing a lot of this yesterday. Uh, she was, you know, this is secondhand, but she was saying how when she went to school today, just to hear everybody's uh, emotions kind of flood while everybody's together, that's just heartbreaking right there. I mean, I feel for him. He had so much life to live. Uh, Emmanuel Lopez, what a great football player he was, but as Darren Walker, their head coach, talked about it today and said to the El Paso Times he was an even better person, always brought a smile to the uh, to everybody's faces, uh, and, you know, he was a very vital part of their football team. So, yeah, this is really tough here, man. The Franklin has a Thursday night football game out at the sack against America's Amer- uh, Franklin has a really good football team as well so I, I just feel for everybody uh, on that football team and everybody in the Franklin uh, f- high school community having to mourn the loss of one of their own no there's no doubt about it and hearing the details on the story where the commercial truck was going the other direction but it's left front tire blue which caused it to cross the median into the westbound lanes before colliding with uh, the SUV I mean look Folks, in life, uh, you know, you never know. It's 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 crazy that, you know, things happen like that, a split second, and you're here one minute, gone the next, and uh, man, oh, man, just uh, hug and kiss your loved ones because, uh, you know, it's another reminder of you, you just don't know, um, you know, when uh, when when the when time's going to be up. It's, it's crazy. All right, 13 past the hour. We have so much to talk about on the program today between UTEP, the Cowboys, um, all the uh, football that's going on in the sports world. Canelo over the weekend. A lot of sports to get to. Let's kick things off with Orley, who watched his uh, 49ers lose to the Minnesota Vikings yesterday. Orley, thanks for the call. Well, first of all, my prayers, thoughts, and prayers to the family of that young man. You're right. You never know what's going to happen from one day to the other. That's why you try never to go to bed angry with a loved one because yep. something could happen the next day. I have a sister who's a flight attendant. I think we have a disagreement. I always uh, make up because you never know what can happen in, in today's world. Uh, life is precious. you got to enjoy every day. Exactly. Uh, first of all, I guess since you've been at the station that long, that made me one of the original callers. I mean, I think you started with Jeff Lindbergh when he first started the program, yeah. which I believe was '92. So right. I took, you know, I took over five years into that run. I took over in '97 for John um, when he was host, and I think he started in '94. So Tyson. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's Tyson. that's that. Yeah, you're the uh, you're an o, you're an you're an OC. You're an original caller. There you go. Original caller. Yeah. Wow, that's been a long time. Think about it. Wow, I've had some good times and some bad times, but hey, once again, I'm calling in. Once my Niners win or lose, I call in no matter what. Was it a disappointing loss? Yeah, but it's not surprising. They usually have a flop somewhere during the during the season. I uh, have not realized that not won in Minnesota since 1992. So. My hat's off to, I'm glad to see uh, the quarterback for Minnesota, uh, Darnold, do well. Yep. He, uh, he had a lot of nice things to say about the organization and Brock Purdy and how he learned from them, so I'm happy for him. Um, as far as UTEP, I thought they played well. They had their opportunities, and it gives a little hope that we may be able to have some wins down the road. I'm surprised there are only nine-point dogs at Colorado State. I thought Me too. Be a lot. Yeah, that's a shocker. But anyway, I wanted to call in, take my lumps, and uh, I'll have a little bet with you and Adrian. I bet you don't get more than ten Cowboy calls today. Oh, and they, there's no way we're going to get they ten. Don't, they don't call in when they lose. You know that. I would be you shocked know. if we get more than three today. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Well, hey, if you get more than ten, then AJ and I will go. I'll take you guys over to uh, to tugboat and have some good fish. Wow, fair enough. I love it. All right, that's it. Let's load the phones. Appreciate it, Orly. Let's have full phone lines for the rest of the show. 
Even if you don't want to talk about the Cowboys, just say you do, and we'll we'll count that. What do you think, Adrian? How, I think that works be for great. me. Great tugboat on yeah. Orly. Come on, oh I've never even God. met Orly in person. Let's do it. You've never met Orly? No. Oh my God, we got to do it. We got to make that I happen. Know. He's I'm an original. You. He's an OC. Yes. You know, you know, you've got those uh, those uh, OGs for UTEP football. We've got the OCs. Yeah, so. that's right. I like it. O- original callers. Yeah. All right, let me take Mark, then we'll go to break. 505 6009 because Charlie's standing by with traffic. Hey, Mark, how are you? Dave, how are you? You know, it's hard to believe 29 years ago, you and I were at our, our Jones Stadium. Hey, Mark, you got to uh, mute your radio. We're hearing a lot of feedback on your side. I'm sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. So, Mark is right. He is, uh, he was, uh, or still is, because, I mean, it's, he's still around. He was one of my mentors in the business because Mark was part of the, uh, he was probably close to the original group for Football Friday Night's reporters, and that's what they did. I got to shadow Mark Dyer going out to R.R. Jones and other games back in those days when uh, I was lucky enough to, to get on the phone for one of the calls that he was working. So very true, Mark. This is It's great. This show is turning into like this is your broadcast life. I like it. <laughs> well, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun back then. You know, Steve, you're not going to believe it, but I turned the big 8-0 this year. Man. That is awesome. That means, you know what that means? When we were working together, you were just a, a fiery uh, early 50s reporter for us is what that means, Mark. So happy uh, yeah, happy, you know, happy birthday on that one. And uh, I just love the fact that, you know, you were part of the Football Friday Night family for many years. You you were one of our, yeah, was, uh, you I, were one of our reporters, yeah. Yeah, I was one of the originals. We, uh, we started and, you know, I... I remember you showed up at R.R. Jones Stadium, and uh, I was doing, uh, I think, El Paso Irvin is the game we were doing. And uh, it was a lot of fun doing those games. But, you know, it got so bad that, uh, you know, I moved out of town, then I moved back. I just moved back here from Columbia, the country. I was in Columbia. uh, And I was listening to you guys. I could get you on my iPad. Oh, I love it. You were listening to us online, Mark. That is fantastic. How long were you in Columbia for? I was there uh, six months. Okay. Okay. Um, Well, listen, I'm happy you're back. Uh, If you would like to uh, come back and join the group again, we don't have an age requirement. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't care if you're – if you're 18 or 80. It doesn't matter to us, Mark. If you want to come back, we'll we'll find a spot for you. I don't – Did we lose Mark, guys? I'm not sure. I think we may have, but uh, I heard right. him right up to that. So maybe yeah. he's shy. Maybe he didn't well, like Mark, the uh, offer. <laughs> Mark, I appreciate the call. Thanks for getting in. Let me say this real quick about Mark and I when we were first uh, doing this. Um, we had brick phones in those days. They used to give us those the biggest bricks from, like, Nokia you could find. So that's what we used to do those high school football shows were the bricks – and some of them didn't even didn't even work in certain parts of town, so we we, we couldn't go all over El Paso because we were only as good as the cell service back in the mid '90s. So it's crazy to think about those days. Qua- crazy, crazy, and God forbid we never asked anybody to use their own cell phones because chances are, if they're even lucky enough to have a cell phone in the '90s like that, they probably had um, a cap on minutes and data and everything else. So if we couldn't trade it, we didn't have it. It was pretty much how it worked back in those days doing football Friday night. Good job, Mark. Appreciate the call. Orly as well. We'll get to Luis right after Charlie won. He's back. He's got our first traffic update of the afternoon. This folks getting ready for the Eagles and the Falcons with happy hour going on till 7 o'clock. In fact, happy hour is going on right now. And get yourself a spot. Be ready to go. we got so much to uh, look forward to tonight. Lots of great prizes. We talked about that earlier. So only way you can do it is with us out here, 1506 Lee Trevino. It is uh, Border City Ale House. I've got questions to get to on uh, on the app, questions on Twitter and X at 600 ESPN El Paso. But first, let me go say hello to Luis. He joins us next. The Sports Talk continues. Luis, how are you? Love you, baby. Love you. Ollie, Ollie. <laughs> woo, woo, how 
about those 40 whiners? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, I was so happy to know that the 40 whiners, I said, I told my wife, Let, my beautiful wife, Leticia, Orly's right now puking. He's running, he's throwing up. Let me tell you the sad news about my cowboys. Okay, they must fire ASAP Mike McCarthy. And I don't know uh, what to say about uh, Zimmer, you know. Uh, I, you know, he was fired by the Vikings. And let me tell you this quickly. Clint Kubiak, the offensive coordinator, should be considered by Jerry Beachhead Jones as the next head coach. If not, let's consider Bobby Slowick of the Texans and or Ben Johnson of the Detroit Lions. What do you think, Steve? I mean, listen. Uh, let's put it this way, okay? They're not getting rid of McCarthy till after the season. So here's my question to you as our first Cowboys fan of the show. I need nine more so Orly buys lunch. Um, here's the question. What would make you happy to keep Mike McCarthy past this year? What do they need to do in January, in your opinion, for McCarthy to stay as, as head coach? Go to the Super Bowl. All right. So it is. So as far as you're concerned, it's Super Bowl or bust. Yeah, absolutely. Is a Pope Catholic? So, I know. I love that. By the way, um, you should be happy. Let me tell you why you're happy. You know, at least this happened after week two. Can you imagine if you had a deal with five or six weeks of playing great football, and then all of a sudden they, this clunker happened? Then, like at least now you're not having to spend the first quarter or you know third of the season thinking that this could be the year for the Cowboys. But I got a better one for you. You know, after watching the Niners lose yesterday to the Vikings, maybe maybe the story in the NFL is this. Maybe and nobody is safe, and maybe anybody can lose no matter what. <laughs> I love him. He is the greatest. That is Luis, folks, at his best. Oh, my God. Luis oh. even brought out props today. I mean, Luis is, like, worth four phone calls, in my opinion, for Orly's wager, but that is hilarious. Good stuff. You know, especially because he actually had quality uh, candidates to be the next head coach. Like, I was waiting he for did. him to come up with, like, the Bill Belichick. And, you know, he didn't even throw well, in the Mike Rabel. Like, it was good stuff yeah. right there. And by the way, I love Clint Kubiak. I think he is head coaching material, and somebody's going to give him a chance sooner rather than later. I do agree with that. Oh, I, I agree, too. I mean, the Slowick one is a good point after watching the Texans last night, but Kubiak has done a lot, and he's obviously comes from great lineage. So that obviously means something to Jerry Jones at some level. So there's, a, there's definitely a good coaching pool. And I'll say this just very quickly about, uh, you know, the Vikings, okay? Because I think this is also very important. Kevin O'Connell is a terrific coach, uh, and he's a former player. So here's my thoughts on this right now, okay? I am already, after watching the first couple of games of the Vikings, I am already under the belief that I will easily lose that bet to Lane Frank about Sam Darnold, Okay. Uh, versus uh, Kenny Pickett. I don't even think that's going to be close. And you know what it shows me? The same thing it showed me with Geno Smith. When you put former Jet quarterbacks in a good system with good coaching and good players around them, you see that they are so much more capable of doing big things versus where they were when they were playing for that franchise. So... You know, that was my biggest takeaway uh, watching Sam Darnold. He has Jefferson, who's one of the best, if not the best receiver in the game. Now he's got Aaron Jones. He's got a good offensive line. He's got a good head coach and coordinator that knows what they're doing. It's amazing to see when you surround prior failures with quality talent what they're capable of. So you're saying there's a chance for Zach Wilson in Denver, Steve. Uh, Bo Nix, you know, some people feel a certain way. Other people feel like he should be benched uh, right now. Maybe Zach Wilson ta assumes the role, lets uh, Bo Nix learn behind him, and then he also has success as a former Jet quarterback. 
I mean, it's possible. I mean, they did not play well at all against um, against Pittsburgh. Now, Bo Nix had the two picks. He was 20 out of 35 for 246 yards, but no touchdowns. And they only could muster up uh, that fourth quarter score. That was it. So, you know, it's possible. It is possible that, uh, although, Zach Wilson, God, you know, he could, isn't he the third string quarterback in Denver? That's he's a not good even point. the ba- he's not even the backup. Jared Stidham is the backup. So I feel better about Sam Darnold than I do about Zach Wilson right now. Well, maybe on this like trajectory, it took a couple of years for Darnold to dust off all the Jets. Uh, yeah. from him so maybe give a uh, Wilson a couple years but you know in, in all seriousness with Darnold that team has so many great skill position players look at that touchdown the 97 yard touchdown to Jefferson just go yeah. up and get it just throw it up there go up and get it Aaron Jones oh, despite right. the fumble in the end zone I mean he was about to get a touchdown he was playing a pretty good game in both the running and the receiving game no he was he was so hey by the way speaking of Lane Frank I saw him at the ballpark on Saturday night he was at uh, Southwest University Park at a Chihuahuas game with a couple of his buddies. Oh, okay. Was he embarrassed yeah. to see you, or did he say hi no. to you? No. Oh, he that's was, great. Why would, he, why would he be embarrassed? Well, you know, no. teenagers, when, they, oh, when no, they're no, with no. friends and stuff like that. Nah, I talked about how great he is in front of his buddies. I, I, I pumped him up. Oh, even better. So then they, they it gave him some cred. Oh, yeah, he had street cred. He was running with three guys, two kids I'd never seen before, but I like it. I mean, you know, maybe they're tennis players. Maybe they're just friends, but, yeah. Now he's got a car. They they're all rolling to the uh, to the ball games together. Wow, social lane, Frank. I like it. That's exactly right. He is social lane. There it is. That's good. All right, is uh, SPN Handling Sports Center here at the yes. bottom of the hour? He's ready to go. Let's let's do it. Sebastian's back. He has this update for us. Five zero five six zero zero nine. As we continue thirty three past the hour here on Sports Talk. Back here on Sports Talk as we continue live, Border City Ale House. 1506 Lee Trevino, 505-6009, our telephone number to get into the show, 505-6009. Uh, a lot more to cover as Sports Talk rolls along. Saw this from Beast Mo earlier regarding Orly's call. This is hilarious. Bro, Beast Mo says, how are you going to call in laughing at somebody else's team when your team got smoked that bad on Sunday? It's a good point. Good point. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes things just happen, don't they? Um, love the call. I love sometimes Twitter and X when they react to other calls. Yeah, that is great. Yeah, a little trash talking, right, Steve? You know, you're calling out the other caller. Uh, yeah. It's just your time to call in. we got to go to tub- Tugboat. Oh, I know. I want, I want to talk about it. We need, what, eight more calls between now and 6.15, all about the Cowboys, so we can uh, give get that bet for Orly and uh, go on him to talk about That would be great. That would be a great uh, That would be a great anniversary gift for the show as well. Would love that. Would love that. Noah Guerrero gets in. If the rumors are true on Air Force bolting for the American Conference, the plot thickens for the Mountain West. Yeah, it's a great point, and he's right. Pete Dammel talked about this a couple of hours ago, that right now it looks like Air Force to the American Athletic Conference could be happening. So there's an, uh, there's another uh, former WAC school for UTEP that could be gone, and if that happens, then, uh, you know, uh, you wonder what else is, what's next for the Mountain West. How do they keep everything else together? How do they keep UNLV and Nevada from leaving or other schools like that? All right, let's go back to the phones. Fernie's going to join us next. The sports talk continues. Fernie, how are you, man? What's going on? Well, just like crying all week in there, Steve. It's been a rough weekend, Fernie. Started started with the minors. Yep. Of course. You know, didn't have my hopes up. And I'm still saying, man, they got to give Kata an opportunity to go in there and maybe try to change the pace or the offense, you know, because he's done it before. I don't know. It just, it just might Let me put that. it this way. Let me put it this way, okay? If in fact they do that, right? Let's just say let's just say Scotty Walden goes with Cade and Cade wins and turns it around. You're not gonna hear the name you're not gonna hear the name Skylar Lockler again unless Cade gets hurt. And if in fact, you know, uh Scotty 
let's just say he promised Cade, you come to UTEP and you're going to get a chance to be the starting quarterback. Now all of a sudden you've taken him out because you think you might have somebody here who's better than you. And I'm with you on this. I get it. But it's tough in the sense that we don't know what's happened behind the scenes. We don't know what happened with Scotty Walden and Skylar Locklear. Skylar Locklear was supposed to be the starting quarterback at Austin P. Now he's the starting quarterback at UTEP. But like you said, if he gives Cade a chance, and let's just say Cade lights it up and they win, you can't go back to to Scott to uh, Skyler again unless something happens to Cade. Yeah, and I mean that's the way it goes. I mean, you no, you're right. Go with the guy Listen, that's win, man. you're right. I'm just throwing it along the signs of we don't know what was what was offered to Skyler, if anything, or what was said. And I almost feel like right now. Scotty Walden is giving Skyler every chance he can possibly have to try to keep that job. And I don't know how long that's going to go. He had three picks last on Saturday, and one of them was called back. Otherwise, he would have had three interceptions in one half of football. But he stuck with him in the second half, didn't throw another pick. Problem is, you know, they didn't win. So, yeah, again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Cade guy. You know that. He's been on this station for a year. We've gotten to know him. I saw him win a couple games last year for UTEP on a team that was going nowhere. So would I love to see Cade in this system after all the work he's put in to to try to get this thing down? Absolutely. Do I think it's going to happen? No, I don't. Well, Steve, what I'm thinking of, you know what? I disagreed with him bringing all his staff to El Paso. He brought way too many players from P got to live with it but i mean if you're going to make a decision let's let's just bring in kate and see how that goes now on another note obviously the cowboys lost that was the other crying weekend you know yep. and i mean that was just one of the worst defensive port performances in cowboy history which says a, a lot yep. for itself you know and that was totally ruining my weekend and then i mean you were mentioning uh, uh air force right now uh, you know, I've called him before, and I said, man, as long as we can stick with NMSU and New Mexico, just just those, those two teams at the least, you know? And where do you, where do you see maybe Memphis ending up? I mean, staying with the American, or you see them maybe pack, you know? Because, I mean, obviously they won't go to the Mountain West, because I think, I, I think that would be a, uh, a, lower, a lower place to go. Where, where I'll say right this, now, but where do you see me? Fernie, and I got to get to a break because we're over the top. Uh, I think, I think personally, Memphis either stays in the American or, like you said, goes to the pack. If Memphis had their choice, but I, you know what? I don't think the pack is going to be considered a power four or power five. Does Memphis even want to leave the American uh, unless they know they're not going to the ACC or the Big 12 or something like that? Because, Adrian, I don't think any of these schools from the American Athletic believe that a, tr- that a jump to the pack is going to make them any better than they are right now. You could call the Pac-12 a Power 5, but we all know who's a part of it, right? It's like, come on, if you want to sensationalize this conference and say it's one of the powers or a high major and all that, you could call it what it is. You can uh, spend all the money you want, but in reality, it's not in the same category as the Big 12, ACC, Big 10, and SEC. You're right. All right, we're coming back for Hour 2 next. Stay with us. Sports Talk continues live. Border City Alehouse right here, 600 ESPN El Paso. Property Schoolyard Sports Studio. Here's Steve Kaplowitz and Adrian Broadus. And we've got our number two. It's Sports Talk Live coming your way from Border City L House, 1506 Lee Trevino, hanging out with you on this Monday, getting ready for the Falcons and uh, the Eagles. That's going to be coming up Monday Night Football. In fact, we'd love to have you sh- uh, share Monday Night Football with us. We've got happy hour going on right now until 7 o'clock. The game is at uh, the Link, Lincoln Financial Field here in Philadelphia, home of the Eagles Fan Club. It's Border City Ale House, and we're going to be giving away some great, great prizes tonight. We've talked about it earlier. We've got Oscar Adietta sunglasses to give away. We've got Disney on Ice tickets to give away. Rhino's tickets for this weekend to give away. 
and uh, basketball uh, on the Body O T-shirt. We've got a Chuck DeBroder T-shirt, which you're never going to find anywhere but here tonight, and a Yingling Flight shirt, not to mention from our friends at all that music and video collectors marketplace in the Fountains of Farrah, just below the Best Buy parking lot. How about uh, an Eagles lanyard? Eagles uh, DVD, the complete history of the Eagles, or an Eagles bottle opener. We also have the bottle opener for the Falcons, the Falcons playing cards, and the Falcons lanyard. That's all here for the show today. Look forward to having all of you come by and be a part of the program. Meanwhile, here at the Ale House, we've talked about happy hour. The food is uh, off the charts good. I can't wait for tonight. In fact, uh, oof, the hardest decision every time I'm here on a Monday is what to eat because the food is great, whether it's the half-pound bur- half burgers, the chicken sandwich. Last week I had the nachos. You've got the delicious order of wings you can have, too. They've got poppers. They have uh, every kind of food item you can imagine, tacos, brisket. Uh, it's all here at uh, Border City Ale House, the home of uh, Sports Talk Live each and every Monday. Sebastian Perez Nevado's in the house along with Alberto Urueta. Minor talk was hot and heavy on Saturday after the game. Uh, Adrian, give me a recap for people that didn't get a chance to catch it or haven't heard the uh, podcast yet, wherever they listen to 600 ESPN El Paso On Demand. Yeah, I'm going to give I thought about this one today. Like, how do I recap minor talk from over the weekend? I think the best uh, post that we got from over the weekend had to come from one of our loyal listeners in Leo underscore minor fan. He was saying uh, something that would be that was really interesting. I think it resonates with a lot of UTEP fans. He said he had tempered expectations to start. But he still expected more than what he's seeing right now for UTEP, and I think UTEP fans can resi- or you know relate to that one right there. They knew that there would be growing pains here in year one, but maybe their expectations were a little different than what's going on so far. I mean, what you've seen so far is an improvement in the defense over the first three games, but offensively, they're one of the worst still in the country. I mean, they're they're yeah. a bottom five scoring offense right now. And you talk to head coach uh, Scotty Walden today in the press conference; he just uh, attribute that to execution they've got to execute more plays in the red zone and have uh, or get rid of all the missed assignments that they had uh this past weekend you know what's funny this season i figured this team would have no trouble scoring points honestly i mean even with their lack of size and knowing that that was going to be an issue with that offense coming in i was under the impression that you know what Points will not be an issue at all when it comes to UTEP football this year. So that, I guess, is something that has surprised me. It has surprised me as well because of just, um, I think, you know, we were talking about this as well is that uh, there are a lot of promises or expectations placed on this team. Hey, this is going to be a high octane offense. They're going to snap the ball every 12 seconds. I mean, we haven't seen that, Steve. We've seen this offense have uh, flashes, have moments. The Kenny Odom 60 yard touchdown that made fans excited that, hey, they they can uh, go fast. They can score in, you know, quick segments or off big plays. But, you know, you don't see it consistently. And I think that's what's, uh, you know, frustrating a lot of UTEP fans. The run game is almost non-existent due to the inexperience that the offensive line is having as well. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. 505-6009 if you want to talk about it with us. Also, Orly crawled into the program earlier and said that uh, Cowboy fans never call in after losses. He was very quick to point out that after the 49ers lost to the Vikings, he was first in on the show. He also identified himself as an OC and original caller of the program since apparently today is my 29th anniversary that I was on the payroll. Didn't even realize that. I I never know when my first hire date was, but apparently it was today, even though, as I said earlier, I started on the, the stations back in June of 95. That's when I made my debut on uh, the KLQ Morning Show with Buzz. Back then it was Johnny Gonzalez and Patty Steele, and I was part of that team. But uh, it was very nice to know that that was 29 years ago. I took over Sports Talk more than 27 years ago for John Teicher. Orley has identified himself as an original fan. He also said, besides being an original caller, that since Cowboy fans never call into the program, if we had 10 callers, he would take us out to lunch. So, We had three in hour number one, which means doing the math, Adrian, we would need seven more Cowboy calls between now and 615 when we get ready for Monday night football kickoff to have Orly take care of uh, 
treating us uh, to lunch out there at uh, Tugboat in Northeast. This could go two ways. Number one, no one calls in because they're Cowboy fans and they're disgusted with the performance yesterday, which I wouldn't blame them. The other way that this could go is that so many Cowboy fans call in and call for you know Mike McCarthy to be fired, Jerry Jones to sell the team, which, again, sounds very familiar to what we have on this radio show, Steve. Uh, fans uh, from the Cowboys going into panic mode. Yeah, I mean... I just, I'm, I'm actually really happy that panic mode could start in week two rather than week five, six, or seven. I mean, let's be honest. The Cowboys were given a big reality check yesterday. They were destroyed by Alvin Kamara and that uh, New Orleans team. And maybe instead of panicking for the Cowboys, maybe we have to start looking at New Orleans as a player that nobody really thought could be taken seriously in that NFC South picture. We all thought Atlanta could be your winners and maybe they still will be but nobody really gave the saints much of a chance so good storyline to talk about let's go to the phones enrique is going to join us next the sports talk continues 505-6009 our telephone number enrique thanks for calling in how are you building yourself how you guys doing congratulations on your anniversary cap ah thanks enrique i appreciate that so i'll just uh, give you guys another cowboy call so here's another one for you guys Good. I just, I, I'm at a loss for words. Um, I kind of figured it happened. I, throughout the years, I'm pretty sure you guys can figure out I'm not a Dak guy. So when I saw they extended him, I was like, well, it's going to be three, four more years of the same old trash. Well, the funny thing is, I don't really think Dak was as much of the issue yesterday as the defense was just getting completely exposed by a Saints team that was never really thought to be, you know, a high-octane offense that's going to put 44 points on the board. In fact, Enrique, that's the biggest surprise. 24 first downs. They had um, uh, 432 yards of offense on 56 plays. I mean, they just made the most of, of their time, and time of possession was pretty much split. So it's interesting that they just had the edge and were able to get things done. They couldn't stop Alvin Kamara. It looked like he was Aaron Jones out there yesterday for the you know against the Cowboys. It was it was something to see. But hey, uh, silver lining on it. I picked up Rashish and the and for my fantasy team, and he he did treat your job pretty well for me. I like it, man. I like it. Well, good. That's hey. If there's a silver lining, at least if you're going to lose, if you're going to watch your team lose, get some fantasy points off of somebody beating them. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. All right. Enrique, appreciate it, man. Thanks for the call. Uh, four down. Let's make it five. Hector from the Upper Valley is joining us next. The sports talk continues 11 past the hour. Hector, what's going on, man? How are you? I, I've, I've missed the show, but I listened to it. I haven't called in, but, of course, I always listen to you guys on the drive-in. Um, I just want to call because I want Orly to pay up. You know, he he's a 49er fan. He needs to pay up, yeah. especially if you get Dallas Cowboys fans calling in. Um, yeah, man, we're halfway there, there thanks to you. So I appreciate that. Good job, Hector. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm disappointed in the Cowboys, but, you know, there's so much parity in the league, and not to make excuses, but I use, I, I'm in this league where you got to pick all the winners, and I'm usually like 14, 13, 15. I've won it a couple of times. Yeah. All of my winners yesterday lost, man. I'm like below 500. All the teams that I thought were going to win lost, the, to include the 49ers. I mean, I thought the Dolphins were going to beat the Bills Thursday night. All of my picks tanked yesterday. And I just think, I'm hoping it's just one bad week. But who knows? You got Baltimore coming on, and they're 0-2. I mean, you got 0-2 teams that shouldn't be 0-2, like the Bengals, the Jaguars. It's just crazy. I I don't know. I mean, do you feel the same way? Um. In a, in a way, I do. I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now that, you know what, I said it in the first hour, I do feel like, uh, for the most part, anybody can beat anybody each week in the NFL. So I guess if you like parity, it's right up your alley. I mean, look, uh, Kansas City's had two nail biters with both Baltimore and, uh, you know, and Cincinnati last night. They've won them both. But, yeah, I can see that for sure. Squeaking by. Squeaking by. Hey, yep. just to switch real quick, a uh, really good uh, sports moment for me. So I went to go watch the Dodgers play in Arizona over the Labor Day weekend. Uh, sold out a lot more Dodger fans than Arizona Diamondbacks. But the first three hitters, uh, Tahi, uh, Mookie, 
and um, the first baseman? Oh, uh, Freddie Freeman. Out. Freddie Freeman. Yeah, yeah, all three of them back to back to back. So we're winning 3-0. I'm all excited. Bottom of the first inning, we're losing 4-3. <laughs> we ended up winning, but I don't know, man. I don't think our pitching is going to hold up. Um, we're losing all our pitchers in Dodgerland. And I don't know. Uh, what, what do you think? Injuries have been brutal. Injuries have just killed. Look, they've, they've, they've hurt a couple of teams. I thought the pitching really hurt uh, with Houston losing all those guys to Tommy John. But the Dodgers the same way. The Dodgers pitching is kind of a shell of what it once was. And, you know, they need Yamamoto back. They need him healthy. Flaherty's been good. But after that, Walker Bueller's getting batted around. They got guys like Landon yep. Knack and Bobby Miller. Yeah, it's been tough for the Dodgers. They just, you know, all their, all their good arms are out for, uh, for the season with injuries. Yeah, you know that uh, when Walker Bueller pitches, it's like 5-0, top of the second. We're, we're yep. always behind, man. Yep. He had a good outing this last time, but we'll see. We'll see what happens going forward. Uh, and I want to switch to minors. Um, I don't know, man. I'm a minor loyalist, but uh, I don't know about this coach, man. 0-3, and, and it doesn't look like it's going to be 1-3. Uh, and three. It looks like it's going to be 0-4 after this weekend. What do you think? Well, I'll tell you right now, the scary thing is uh, the story right now is that Colorado State star receiver Torrey Horton is not expected to play against the Miners this week. At least that's according to head coach Jay Norvell. Um, they've got a bye after that week, and he's expected to return against Oregon State. Um, listen, even if Horton doesn't play and UTEP is able to contain Colorado State's offense a little bit, they got to score points. That's the key. And, by the way, Sam Houston might even be better than Colorado State when you look at those two teams. So, yep. yeah, it's, I agree. they're going to have a hard time winning games. They really are. You know, one thing is um, I really think that he should have gone with the other quarterback, the kid who works with uh, with you guys. He's a great kid, man. He helped my mom one day at Albertson. Um, I was rooting for him, um, and it didn't happen. And now look where we're at. I mean, give him a chance, man. Jesus. I'm with you, I, and and that's the thing. It's like you got to hope that you don't know when that opportunity is going to happen, whether it's a bad half of football or an injury. But you know, if Cage ready and he makes the most of his opportunity, then maybe the Miners could uh, could end up getting that that first elusive win with uh, with his coaching staff. I appreciate it, Hector. Good to hear from you, man. Thanks for the call. You're five into our Cowboy calls, and hey, Chad Middleton's in. Anytime Chad knows he can help call in to make Orly pay for a bet, he's going to do it. How What's you doing? up, Five, eleven, two hundred. Thanks for the vine. <laughs> Everybody, relax, relax. Is that it? Oh, we draw. He dropped. He dropped. That was all you called. Call said, <laughs> "Relax." Call and relax. <laughs> I think he's he's uh, he's giving us the best Aaron Rodgers impersonation and uh, telling Cowboys fans they got to relax. Things are going to be okay. He seems to be a little more confident uh, than other Cowboy fans are right now. I like that. Good stuff. Okay. If you get, he's probably on the mountain. That's probably the problem. He's driving Trans Mountain, and we lost him, which uh, I get it. Happens from time to time with people, so that's okay. In fact, uh, you know, got to give him the pass on that because I've seen how, uh, you know, in some parts of town we can, you, you have calls uh, drop easily. All right. Chad's back. All I heard was relax, and then you lost the, uh, we lost the call. Are you there? Now I am. All right. Sorry about that. I'm in the valley, so I so I lost you. Anyway, everybody needs to relax. It's week two, but the most important thing that everyone is missing is the Browns are one and zero when Jameis Winston plays. Pete, when ah. Jameis Winston on the field, the Browns are one and zero. That's what's important. That's what everybody should be talking about, Steve. They Come should. On. Although I'm still, you got to count yourself as a Cowboys fan been, today, you, just because we need Orly to, to to pay this bet off, Chad. You got to you got to count yourself okay. as a Cowboys fan. All right, consider this a Cowboy call. This is number six. Uh, the Cowboys were not prepared yesterday. They came out flat. They look like the exact same game they played against uh, Bay in the playoffs, and they had no answer for David Carr. I know. Car. I know. Yeah. It's it was brutal. It was brutal. I mean, and 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 not only that, Alvin Kamara, like the game of his life yesterday. 
against the boys. Alvin Kamara from Steve. Where's he from, Steve? <laughs> Where did he play college? Adrian, anyone? Tennessee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Rocky Top sticking it. Oh, and by the way, how's Richard doing today? How is no, Richard? we haven't we haven't heard from Gator Richard. There you go. We haven't brought his name up at all so far on the show. Oh, oh Gator Richard. What a tough day he's had. The swamp right. is more, Steve. Hey, it is. You got that is true. wonderful day. Thanks for the call. Talk to you later. Now, thank you for the call. By the way, Alvin Kamara, a third-round pick out of Tennessee in the same draft that did produce Aaron Jones and Patrick Mahomes. The 2017 draft will probably go down as an all-timer when it's all said and done. All right, uh, let me get to Joe, then we'll take the break as we continue here on Sports Talk. Joe, what's happening? How you doing, Joe? Is Joe there? Yes, we lost him. Sorry. All right, we lost Joe. Joe, call us back. We'll keep the show moving. We'll keep the pace going. Good hour start as we continue in our 5 o'clock uh, hour here on Sports Talk. But first, let's get right back to Charlie One with traffic. Then more at Border City Ale House, 1506 Elite Trevino. We're an hour away from Monday Night Football. Eagles, Falcons, right here with you at the Ale House. 6009, our telephone number, 505-6009. You can also uh, get in on Twitter and X at 600 ESPN El Paso. All right. I've got Joe, and then we'll get back to uh, some more comments on uh, Twitter and uh, more uh, messages on the app as well. Coming your way live, Border City Ale House, 1506 Lee Trevino, where we are uh, getting you all ready to go for Monday Night Football tonight between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Atlanta Falcons. This is the home of the Eagles fan club, and uh, looking forward to having another great turnout here tonight. Joe, appreciate you getting back with us. How are you today? I'm very good. Yourself? Doing fine. Thanks, Joe. Hey, two things. One about the Miners and one about the Cowboys. Okay. Uh, the Miners, uh, I'm a Miner fan last, last time. I went to UTEP, and uh, I still follow the Miners. But they are too small to be playing Division One. They don't have the, the size, the body, big bodies. That's why they get run over and they run out of gas. You know what's interesting and, uh, about that comment, Joe, was I've seen a lot of UTEP teams that match what you just said exactly right. But the last couple of years, despite not winning a lot of games, you looked at the teams Dana Dimmel brought to UTEP, and they matched up physically with everybody, not just at Conference USA, but he would go up against Power 5 schools, and they would hold their own, especially up front on both lines. That was really where Dimmel had built it up size-wise. So I know that yeah. a, a lot of those guys were let go when uh, when Scotty got here after the spring, and now they've got kind of a of a of a different group of uh, ball players that are smaller and undersized, but I'm really hoping that uh, he will find a way to add to the, the the players that are made for FBS and and not FCS. So I'm with you on that one. I, I really am. Yeah, that's good. Scotty Wall is going to do good. He'll do good, but it's going to take a while. We we got to be patient. Okay. Now, give me your thoughts on the Cowboys, Joe. Cowboys is the general manager, and Dak Prescott is the quarterback, and no running back. We're not going anywhere. When you talk about the situation at hand, I mean, what's the bigger issue to you? Is it Prescott or the running game right now? Running game going, there's nobody there. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I there's mean. no running back there to, uh, to no, there isn't one, and that and that's a huge that is a huge issue. In fact, you know, I mean, Tony Pollard is not exactly lighting it up in Tennessee. I think he had sixty-two yards yesterday on um, on seventeen carries, but he also had another forty yards in the air on five receptions. And you know, I think Cowboy fans are going to go and look at that move of uh, you know bringing back Zeke. And uh, going with Rico Dowdle and letting Pollard go, and and that's one that 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 is going to be bothering Cowboys fans for a while, for sure. Yeah, it's going to bother them for a long time. Yeah, yeah. 
What do you think? What, what do you see? Do you see this being a playoff team this year? Uh, they'll make the playoffs, but they'll be one and done. Yeah. Well, and if that's the case, you're probably looking at the end of Mike McCarthy as head coach. That's for sure. So, anyway, all there. right. As long as Jerry Jones is there, we're done. No, let me tell you something, Joe. Those are those are the same lines that I've heard. Everybody, and not just around town, everybody everywhere has said that for years. And um, again, on, Jerry will never relinquish uh, player personnel rights. And until the Cowboys allow somebody not in the Jones family to handle uh, football business, this could be uh, yeah, what you're relegated to every single time. And that's it. You know, you want Jerry to open up his checkbook and pay guys and, and write checks. You just don't want him to handle player personnel, player movement. And that's something that, uh, you know, it's got to eventually change. Somebody said that it won't change until after Jerry dies. Now, my thoughts are this, Adrian. Who's to say Stephen Jones is going to suddenly relinquish those rights and, and bring in football people? We don't even know if that's going to happen with him. Yeah, it's just the justification. Hey, this is how we've always done it. We've always yeah. done it like this. We've always kept it in-house. We've always kept it in the family. Why would I relinquish this now if I've had all these years of experience doing this? 28 after as we go to Mike from the west side. He wants to get in next. Hey, Mike, how are you? How are you doing? Good. Thanks, Mike. How about yourself? Well, I just wanted to tell everybody, like our friend said, relax. This UTEP team is a team in progress. Honestly, the best we could hope for in the first four games was to be 1-3. and three. Probably going to be 0-4. You never know until they lace them up, but Losing to the Southern Utah was was a bad thing. I'm not going to pave that one over. But honestly, this is a brand new team with about 219 new players. They have made some progress, and we're not as bad as people think we are. So hang on. We've got a long season to go. We're not going to be national champions or anything. The one thing I don't like, I know we need the money, but any momentum we build, we're going to go into Rocky Top second to last game of the season and probably get the stuffing kicked out of us and that's just going to be a brutal game yeah because if you thought nebraska was good watch what tennessee is doing to everybody i agree with you there so especially but, if tennessee's yeah. in the hunt they'll be very hungry you know what's interesting last year austin p played tennessee really tough and shocked them I don't necessarily expect uh, Tennessee to struggle with UTEP the way they did Austin P. They'll probably remember that game and want to send a message, like you said. But that is also something to note, that one of the big parts of last year's uh, nine-win season for Walden and Austin P was just how tough they played Tennessee when they had them. Well, one of the dirty facts of life is those SEC teams, when they're in the hunt for a national championship and it's the end of the season – They'll take a little pinata team like UTEP or NMSU, and they'll just run the score yeah. up as far as they can. So I, I hope that doesn't uh, crush us at the end of the season. Mike, how many wins are you projecting for the Miners when it's all said and done? Believe it or not, three. Well, listen, I believe it because Adrian and I, we both predicted four. So I feel that, and that was before the season started. So, yeah, I think three is probably uh, – you know, it's it's fair. Three and nine is is act, actually, you know, what, what a lot of minor fans right now will probably say they'll be lucky to win three games. Well, so. and if we're moving up, I'll take it. I mean, I'm not expecting a complete turnaround this season. So yeah. let's let's give this team a chance and see where they go. Who's your NFL team, Mike? ABC, baby. Anyone but the Cowboys. I had a great weekend. I <laughs> appreciate the call. Thanks for getting in. All right, Mike does not qualify for our Cowboy calls as a result of that answer. So we are right now at 7. 7 out of 10 is uh, what we've had so far. So we need three more, and then uh, Orly buys lunch. I like that. I think we have pretty good odds, Adrian, with about 45 minutes left to go in the show. Yeah, I think we can make this happen. I appreciate the callers who have chimed in so far for this one right here. We're going to enjoy some great tugboat, uh, thanks to Orly. Uh, Steve, my other thought to this, this is you know, this is a good call right there by Mike. I, I think that there's a lot of UTEP fans that have already thought, it doesn't even matter what this season looks like. Let's really judge uh, this coaching staff, this new regime on year two and, year, and beyond that. My question to you,
to you is, is this truly a rebuild of a season or are they trying to be competitive? And my next question to you is, when do you believe uh, UTEP's first win will come? God. We'll talk about that right after Sports Center with Sebastian. That's up next, 505-6009, our telephone number. Live at the L House, we're taking you up till uh, kickoff for the Eagles and the Falcons right here, 600 ESPN El Paso. And, I mean, you asked where I think the first win is going to come. That is a really, really good question. In fact, it's probably the million-dollar question right now. And, I mean, my answer, I think, will probably be maybe FIU on the 16th of October. That was my answer on Minor Talk when we posed it to our listeners uh, over the weekend because of the road trip alone. I mean, Florida yeah. making Flor- uh, Florida International coming all the way over to El Paso, uh, having to play a late kickoff game on a Wednesday. Yeah, that I don't care what kind of Panthers team they have up at that point. I just feel like that's a really grueling road trip right there for a team to experience. But you know what the thing that drives me nuts is, and then we'll get to Ruben's call in a moment, I don't feel like this season is a complete lost cause yet. Like, if they trotted out Cade and he didn't work, and then they decided, you know what, we're pretty much not doing anything this year, so let's develop Skyler and see if he can be our guy, I'm fine with it. But I've got a, I've got a difficult time knowing you've got a quarterback with experience who won two games, played well in the spring, battled all the way down to the end of the fall, and never is even given a chance in year one. That's, to me, the toughest part about this season is you want to give Skyler the season and develop him as your young quarterback, that's fine. But do it after you've had a chance to at least see if Cade McConnell can win football games for you in year one. How do you not even try to see if that can work for you? This early in the season. Well, for me, it just seems like maybe there wasn't really that uh, battle as what they were kind of leading everybody to because if there was truly a battle, then after that third interception, even though it didn't count, even though Skyler, I credit his toughness and the way he bounced back in that second half of the game. Yeah. I think most coaches look to the backup and th- say, hey, at least get warmed up, get ready to go in. I don't think in, at any point in that Liberty game were they thinking to go to a backup quarterback in Cade McConnell. I think they were going to go ride or die with Skylar Locklear in that game, and I, I don't know if they're going to look back on that decision. Well, if there was no real battle, then they've lied to the, everybody, the fans, the media, and Cade. Let's be honest, because he was ready. He was talking like there was a battle right till the very end because he would see it in practice, and he lived it. The thing is this, okay, and this is the hardest part. You only go off of what we've heard from Cade, uh, Skyler, and Scotty Walden, and they were talking about it being a battle right down to the very end. So it's right down to the very end. How do you not at least see if the person that came up short to start can't try to salvage the season before you decide to call it a year? Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that, and I guess to you know the coaches' uh, points when you bring up the quarterbacks, when you bring up the offense and some of the inefficiencies the offense is currently undergoing right now, yeah. they'll bring up the offensive line, they'll bring up inexperience right there. So uh, as far as they're concerned, they're pointing the finger of blame elsewhere other than the quarterback position. Let's go to uh, Ruben in Central. He joins us next on the program as Sports Talk continues. Ruben, thanks for the call. How are you? All right, let's see if we got Ruben from Central now. Check mark Ruben, are you there? Check mark. I'm here. All right, Ruben. Thanks for the call. Okay, Adrian. Check mark, check mark, check mark, and you can go down the list of everything you just said, starting with why not pull this guy, Skyler, after the third interception. It's not like Cade was going to make it any worse, and to be honest with you, I think he would have made it better. Um, you guys know that I haven't hidden anything at all about my thoughts about Cade. And as far as like there being a battle between Skyler and Cade for the beginning, for the starting spot this year, I think that was a very, very good snow job. Okay. And I feel bad for Cade. I really do. Um, I think that we were led, everybody was led on, um, you know, why would you bring in a quarter horse and then sit him down? And I'm talking about Skyler. He was pretty much guaranteed that job the whole time. I mean, let's call it what it is. Seriously, you know. And uh, like I said, I feel I feel bad for Cade. 
because I think he's an up, he's an upstanding young man, and uh, I think I think he should be given a chance. And just like what you said, Steve, you know that that perform those performances that he had at the end of the year, I think that kind of solidified that we had a very good D1 quarterback ready to play, not some FCS guy. And I'm sorry, but that's what it boils down to. And then they, you can also take that on to the offensive line and maybe a little bit of the defense. Because I tell you what, I have not been impressed at all with what I've seen in the last two games. I'm not even going to talk about the Nebraska game because all that was was a check-writing game. So I'm, 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 really, dis- I'm really disappointed. I really am. Um, I'm about as disappointed with UTEP as I am with the Dallas Cowboys. Well, that happened yesterday, and I feel like you and the rest of the Cowboy fans are all say, you know, echoing the same thing. What bothered you the most yesterday? Was it the defense, the lack of the run game, all of the above? You tell me. Honestly, Steve, it's like they didn't even show up, man, and I, that's what's disappointing. You know, and everybody got all excited, you know, the week before when they beat the Cleveland Browns. I mean, seriously, Cleveland, give me a break, you know. I mean, the other thing, too, is our running game, just like the caller before me said, and I agree with that gentleman 100%, our running game is non-existent. And the fact that they brought Z back, that was a joke. And I said that from the very first day when they said they were bringing him back. That's just a joke. It is. And honestly, the other thing, too, you know, why wait till the end of the year to fire Mark Mc- Mike McCarthy? If everybody already knows that he's going to be gone, get somebody in here already that's going to be able to kind of maybe put a Band-Aid on this thing and let's go forward. I tell you, I'm tired of losing. I'm tired of losing. Not only with the Cowboys, but I hate to say this, I'm tired of losing here at UTEP. I mean, you know, I, I want to support Scotty, and, and half of me says, you know what, don't throw in the towel, but I tell you what, um, I don't know, bud. I just, uh, you know, like you said, I'm looking at the schedule, and I just, I tell you what, I got my candles lit at home that they're able to pull something out of the bag with Sam Houston. Um, we need to get the fans back, and uh, it's going to take a couple of wins to get those fans back in the at, in, at the Sun Bowl, and, and uh, you know, that's really a letdown for those 41,000-plus fans that showed up that first night that we couldn't pull, UTEP couldn't pull off that that win. Um, those 41,000 people that showed up deserved that win. They really yeah. did. Yeah. Can't, uh, can't disagree with anything that you said today, Ruben. Great phone call. Appreciate the, the time and the uh, comments. And, uh, again, between the Cowboys and the Miners, yeah. It was a uh, it was a rough rough weekend, no doubt about that. All right, eighteen in front of six. The sports talk continues. We'll come back, wrap up hour two of three. Stay with us. Can you ready for Monday night football? It's coming up here at the L House. We'll front of six. The sports talk continues. Hey, we need two more cowboy calls to uh, win Orly's lunch bet. So let's get a moving, Cowboys fans. Two more calls, and it's a done deal. 505-6009. He says Cowboy fans never call in after losses. We've had eight of you already call in, so we're just uh, too short. That's all we need. Two more, and uh, we are good to go. 505-6009. That is our telephone number as we continue live from Border City Ale House. I want to read this message that we just got on the app during the break And uh, this one comes from First Down Dash. Let me go through that right now. One, really disappointed in quitting at the end of the first half. The only reasoning to me would be to prevent Skyler from throwing another interception. Two, why is Scotty so enamored with Sky? Seems like he's willing to shoot himself in the foot and play Sky just to save face of his decision to start Locklear over Cade. He's 0-3 while he's got a guy on the bench with wins under his belt. Three, lastly, did we really improve or is Liberty just not that good? All right, let me start with three on that one, first down dash, and great comments on the app. I don't think Liberty's that good. I haven't been impressed by Liberty all season. Whether it was their first game against Campbell, how they won at the last minute against New Mexico State, or this game against UTEP uh, this past week, I have not seen enough 
to think that they are they, they're not even close to what they were this time last year. So no, I don't think they're that good. Uh, yet, despite Liberty being down, they're still a better team than UTEP. And there goes, really, there's no question about that right now. As far as the whole Skyler Cade thing, look, I said the same thing as you. I mean, why would you not at least see what you have with the proven commodity who is on the bench after playing six games last year? It doesn't make any sense. And if you didn't, if you were never going to play him in the first place, did you keep him here as an insurance policy or why? Because... You know, that's the other interesting thing, uh, Adrian. A lot of former players from Dana Dimmel were not here after uh, Scotty came back, whether it was spring ball or when he first arrived. Yet Cade is someone that every time Walden talks, he always says glowing things about him, but he has not given him the opportunity to see what he can do with this uh, with this program this season. As it was pointed out on Minor Talk over the weekend, there's a lot of uh, former Dimmel guys or current, uh, yeah, I guess they were recruited by Dimmel, but they stayed on the roster, who are currently not playing a lot of football right now. Like Judah Ezenwa, he was projected yep. to be the starting tight end, kind of phased out of the offense here as, it can, as this season continues. We've got two calls, and they're both Cowboys calls, which means I think we might have our lunch bet. Let's go first to Adrian in Central, then we'll say hello to Rick in Clint. Adrian, thanks for getting in. Hey, no problem. How are you doing, Steve? Good, man. How are you? I <clears throat> can't complain, man. Can't complain. Hey, I'm going to give you a, a Cowboys take, but I want to get in a, a quick baseball take for you. Something that that happened to me while I was going to baseball games during the during the this baseball season, real quick, if you don't mind. Sure. So, on the Cowboys, man. You know what? I'm, it is concerning for the defense to have you know laid an egg like they did yesterday. But I'm going to tell you what. They did the same thing last year, just one week later. They they were 2-0 and and went and laid an egg in Arizona, Steve. And then they, they came back and, and ran off a, a bunch of games and, and did well. So, you know, until I see them have a couple, two, three games in a row that, that, that they're not producing, then I'll get worried. I'm not worried right now, man. Okay. Okay. That's fair. That's you know, fair. That's Yep. That's that. Yeah, how many teams laid an egg yesterday? All kinds of lots. Upsets, so tons you know, of parody, tons of parody in the NFL. Right on, Adrian. It is. A, hey, real quick, Steve. I made it out. I think I my count was six six games this year. Six major league games. Um, two at uh two at um, Rangers, and then uh, in Chicago, White Sox and Cubs, and then Arizona, and one in Colorado. Okay. And, I'll tell you what, man. Three of those games, I saw something very, very rare. In in uh, Chicago, when the Pirates played the Cubs, it was Paul Skeen's second career start. Nice. And it was the game where he fanned seven straight Cubs, man. Yep. So, you know, that was an amazing thing to see. I had never seen anything like that. You know, I'm a long time, you know, lifelong baseball fan and follow the game closely, so... That was really awesome to see. Well, all I can tell you is this. I know you see something special every time. And by the way, Adrian, I got to get to Rick. So please, let's finish this baseball call tomorrow. I want to hear some of the other things you had a chance to see at the other games. Let me say hello to Rick. Then we'll wrap up the hour. Rick, your turn. Go on the Cowboys. What are your thoughts? Yes, uh, on, on the Cowboys, uh it's the same old story. Uh, it's they get they are very vulnerable in the middle and the running game, and secondly, of course, they don't have a running game themselves. Uh, so I, I I can't believe they passed up on Aaron Jones when they had a chance to, to pick him up after Green Bay released him, and secondly, the uh, they could have had Derrick Henry as well uh, last season, but uh, they they flubbed that one. And so I, I'm you know I. I don't think they're going to. I think they're going to go about eight and nine. They're going to miss the playoffs. Wow. And Mike McCarthy needs to get fired and probably will. Do you have a head coach you want to see take over the team? Belichick. Belichick it is. All right. There it is. There's your hot take right now from Rick and Clint. Good job, Rick. Appreciate it. Ten calls in the books. 
Thank you to all of you. Orly will schedule this uh, lunch here during the week. We'll come back, get you ready for Monday Night Football, live aboard the City Ale House, 600 ESPN El Paso. To go here on the show, which also features Alberto Dueta and Sebastian Perez Novato, uh, the uh, Eagle fans are uh, filing in, and uh, we've got about five left to go on the program. Great prizes you can win thanks to our friends at All That Music and Video located at the Fountains of Farrah just below the Best Buy parking lot. Whether it's Eagles and Falcons, lanyards, keychains, we've got a deck of Falcons playing cards and uh, Eagles' greatest uh, DVD of their history. We've got some Oscar Adietta sunglasses as well as some um, ID pouches if you would like for your uh, uh, Win the West IDs for your insurance cards. We've also got tickets to see the El Paso Rhinos this weekend, Disney on Ice on Wednesday, October the 2nd. T-shirts to give away as well, all here at Border City Ale House. So make your way on down, enjoy happy hour, enjoy the delicious food, whether it's the half-pound burgers, the uh, tacos, the chicken sandwiches, the nachos, and uh, so many great things. The wings uh, that also you can enjoy whether it's the original Honey Hot, Lemon Pepper, or all their flavors, it's uh, here at Border City Ale House. Well, Adrian, we've had a busy show, and one of the things we have not talked about was the Canelo Alvarez win on Saturday night. I think that kind of uh, was uh, part of the busy sports weekend that a lot of El Pasoans were enjoying. Yeah, I mean, I had uh, UFC 306 on one screen, Canelo on the other. I was expecting that early round knockout by Canelo, but it's just not going to happen anymore in this phase of his career, Steve. He's just going to probably go to the distance, destroy all of his fighters, can't stand to zone for all of these uh, fights that have been scheduled for guys like Canelo. It feels like they're always overmatching their opponents. Um, and then on the other side with UFC 306, very disappointed in Sugar Sean O'Malley. Marab ends up winning that one handily and ends up being uh, the next Bantamweight uh, title holder. So, great night all around for combat sports on Saturday. It really was a great night. And, uh, again, part of the busy weekend. What about tonight's game? What about the Eagles and the Falcons? Can Atlanta make this a game like we've seen throughout the NFL so far for the first two weeks? So week two always brings you the upsets. That's why I was picking some crazy ones with Lane Frank from Schoolyard Sports. I'm going to go a different direction this time around and say Falcons hang in and prove everybody wrong from a terrible first week. So give me the Falcons in this one. Oh, my God. You realize what this place is going to be like if that happens? No, yes. thank you. Yeah. You're going to want to get out of there by halftime, Steve. Right on. Right on. Uh, will Charlie give us one last traffic update before we wrap up the show in a few minutes? Yes, he will. That's right. Excellent. Looking forward to that. Um, in fact, I, you know, it's funny. Charlie's been with us 27 years. I swear when I started on this radio station, Air One was doing traffic updates from a helicopter in El Paso. Now, I don't know if he was really in a helicopter, but I seem to recall Air One started, and then Charlie One came in after that. So maybe Charlie, when he gives us that last traffic update, can clarify a little bit on the Air One situation, because I feel like that is how I started out in this business. Uh, Adrian, let's put it this way. As far as the miners go, you and I both said the same thing. I wasn't even—I didn't even hear that answer on Minor Talk, although I listened to a good part of the show when it ran after the uh, Chihuahuas game Saturday night. So I was really happy we, we had that programming on the radio station. But I just don't know. Like, are we in total rebuild mode after three weeks? Are we still with a team that thinks they can win some conference games? It's hard to really know what the identity is right now. It is. I feel like if you start to, or I would say if you continue to see the freshman play, remember this weekend you saw true freshman Shay Smith play a Wildcat snap. He fumbled the ball, by the way, uh, but you also saw defensive tackle, true freshman Kyron Duhon play in the game. He actually had two tackles in the matchup, which was interesting. You, this is the time right here. This is the fourth game. So if they want to continue to play these freshmen, they're going to have to get uh, probably a little more playing time. But on the flip side, if you don't want to play any more freshmen, then you use the red shirt on them. You allow them to play these first four games, and then you wait till next season to see what you got. I still don't see this as a lost cause just because I don't think the league is any good. That's why it's like, don't play for next year. Try to win now. I was wrong on Liberty. I mean, they're not that good. I would totally agree with no. what you were saying. So is this a winnable, winnable conference, USA? Maybe for uh, some of the other contenders like Western Kentucky and some and, yep. and teams like that. But for UTEP, I don't know if it's a, you know, a, t- a league right now that they can go through and actually win a couple games. Maybe they win one or two. 
Sam Houston's another team that should win a lot of games this year. Very so true. We'll wait and see. All right, folks, Ale House, 1506 Lee Trevino. Come down with me. Tons of prizes here at halftime. The food specials, the drink specials, the atmosphere, the Eagles fan club. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's go to Charlie One. One last traffic update, and then it's Monday Night Football on 600 ESPN El Paso.